my name is Douglas Laubacher. I'm a cartoonist from Northeast Ohio. Um, I've taught here at the Maslin Museum before, and I actually was part of um, one of their recent art shows. I draw a comic strip called Unbound. Uh, it runs in a couple local newspapers in uh, Northeast Ohio. It runs in the Tuscarawas County Bargain Hunter and in the Wooster Weekly News. Um, it's a comic strip about libraries. Um, it's about a bunch of animals that run a library, and I draw that because I got started teaching cartooning by going into libraries and teaching there, and it's kind of branched out, and now I'm at places like this, talking about cartooning to you. So for this month's Do the Moo, since this is for October, um, I figured we would do something kind of fall or Halloween oriented. So today, I'm gonna talk to you about how to draw your very own jack-o'-lantern and how to turn different things into a jack-o'-lantern. Uh, let me tell you what art supplies you're gonna need. Um, I like to keep these things simple. So really all you need is paper and a pencil. I have a giant drawing pad here so that you guys can see what I'm drawing. And I also have a Sharpie so you guys can actually, again, see what I'm drawing. But if you just have photocopy paper and a pencil, you should be good to go. Even if you've just got a college ruled notepad and a ballpoint pen, that'll be fine for this exercise too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about contour lines. And you probably already know what contour lines are, even if you don't think you know what contour lines are. So a really good example of a contour line um, is something like a globe. If you've ever looked at like a globe of the world, contour lines are simply for artists, imaginary lines that follow the contours of an object. So if you've ever looked at a globe, draw a very simple cartoony globe here. So you've got all these lines that go around the earth that are imaginary lines. You've got like the equator and all these longitude and latitude lines that go around the globe to help you figure out coordinates. That's kind of what contour lines do for artists. They help us figure out the coordinates of what we're drawing and they help us to communicate the idea that something is 3D. Um, even without shading, we, they're very effective. They're a nice little visual cue and can show uh, the viewer that an object is 3D. So if I had a sphere and I wanted to put contour lines on it, they're gonna follow the contours of the sphere. So if I just draw this and I tell you it's a sphere, you only know it's a sphere because I told you it's a sphere. If you looked at this on its own, you'd be like, it's a circle, and circles are flat, and spheres are round. So we're gonna add some contour lines to this circle to really communicate the idea that it's a sphere. And so if we had a contour line on this, we're gonna start with like the two extremes, and we're gonna fill in the gaps. So let me show you what I mean by that. So for something like this, the contour line that's closest to us, that's in the middle, is just gonna be straight up and down. It's gonna look like it's a straight line. The most extreme contour line on this end is almost gonna be like a whole nother circle. So we've got one over here that's almost exactly like our circle, but it's squished in just a little bit. So in between these two, we can start filling in what they look like. So it, it starts to look like, it starts to look like maybe like a basketball or some kind of fruit that's been cut. And so you can already kind of see how maybe this is gonna become a pumpkin and it's gonna become a jack-o'-lantern for us. Because on this, this is just a regular sphere, but as the artist, you can decide what direction these contour lines are gonna go. And so I am gonna show you how to make some adjustments to this that make this object look like it's a pumpkin. And then I'll show you what you can do to it to make it look like a jack-o'-lantern.
Pumpkins come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, so I'm gonna show you how you can basically turn any object into a pumpkin. So I'm gonna start with a sphere, like we talked about before, like I just showed you. But then we're also gonna take a cylinder, and if you don't know how to draw a cylinder, I'll walk you through it real quick, because a cylinder is so easy to draw. You're gonna draw an oval, just a long oval. And it's gonna look just like that. Try to make sure when you're drawing, you'll hear me say this a lot, you're constantly comparing. You wanna to try to make this oval as symmetrical as possible. So you're comparing this side of the oval to this side of the oval. When you're done with that, you're gonna bring the sides of the cylinder down. So we're gonna go straight up and down with this side of the cylinder, and then we're gonna compare. We're gonna draw this other side of the cylinder and when I'm drawing, I'm constantly looking back and forth. I'm comparing this side of the cylinder to this side of the cylinder. And then when I'm done with that, we're gonna, it's like if this was on a computer, if I could copy and paste this shape, I would just copy and paste it down here. I wanna try to make an oval that looks almost exactly identical to this. It doesn't have to be exactly identical. It's just gotta feel exactly identical. Um, so we're going to turn these two uh, shapes into pumpkins first because that's how you start with a jack-o-lantern, you start with a pumpkin. Very similar to what we did with our contour lines. We're going to use the idea of contour lines um, to add some pumpkin qualities to this uh, circle over here. So with our contour lines, we had like a line here and we had some lines over here. If we kind of expand these lines out and make them feel a little bit more lumpy, we can make this really feel like a pumpkin. Pumpkins also usually have a stem at the top. So we're gonna add, we're gonna add like a little divot here at the top and we'll add a little stem shape. And I'll darken that in so you guys can see it. But this is gonna be the point where all of our like lumps follow around the contours of this pumpkin. This is gonna be where they come from. So we're gonna have this big lump over here, another one come down like this, and they're all meeting toward the middle at the bottom, but they're all coming from up here at the top where this stem is. And maybe we'll have one that goes this way. This one's closer to the front, and this one's closer to the front, and we'll have another big one come out this way. So there, we kind of have this pumpkin shape. Maybe I'll add a little line down here at the bottom as like a shadow to show that it's sitting on the ground and it's not just floating in space. So there, we've turned this sphere into a pumpkin shape. We can do the same thing with this cylinder because you've all seen those pumpkins that are like really tall. So I'm gonna add a little like dimple at the top of this again. And I'm gonna draw a stem kind of sticking out of the top of this cylinder. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kind of round out this cylinder a little bit but these sides are still gonna stay really long. So we're gonna have this lump that kind of comes out like this. And goes around and down, meets at the middle. And we're gonna have another one that kind of goes out and down like this. And you can still see how I'm kinda, I'm kinda trying to make it rounded but it's much longer. So we've got this kind of traditional round looking pumpkin and then we have this much taller looking pumpkin uh, that's based off of a cylinder. And you can do this with 
all kinds of different shapes. It doesn't have to be a cylinder. It doesn't have to be a circle or a sphere. Um, let me show you how to do one with a cube. So um, if I'm gonna turn a cube into a pumpkin, um, what I would do is I would draw a cube first, just like we drew a cylinder. Cubes can be a little tricky. I'm gonna start with the top of the cube and I draw this kind of sliver of a diamond shape. When I'm done with that, it's a lot like drawing a cylinder. I'm gonna bring down the sides of the cube and I'm constantly comparing. I'm looking at this side of the cube and I'm trying to compare it to the other side of the cube. Helps to kind of stand back and look at it when you're working bigger. And so when you're done with this part, just like on the cylinder, we almost wanna like copy and paste this diamond shape down here but we're not working on a computer, we're working in real life, so you have to copy and paste with your brain, which isn't always the easiest, but you can do it. And then we can connect it like this, and so we have a cube. Just like with the other shapes, I'm gonna add kind of a little dimple at the top, middle of the cube. I'm gonna add my stem and that's kind of like my, uh, my directional marker to tell me where to start all of the lumps on our pumpkin. And from here, we're gonna bring one out like this. And I'm gonna keep these ones really angular because I think it would be fun to have a really square pumpkin. So I'm, I'm not going too round on this one. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side because I really wanna square off my sides on this pumpkin first this time. I'll add a couple lumps in the back here and everything, all of those lumps, they all kind of lead back to our stem up here. And again, these work just like contour lines. So contour lines follow the contours of an object. And on our cylinder and on our sphere, we have kind of rounded sides and rounded edges. And we don't have anything that's round on a cube. It's all really sharp angles that meet each other. So I'm trying to think, you know, you have this part here that kind of goes along the top and then if it was a perfect cube, it would come straight down, but I'm adding just a little bit of roundedness to it so that it still feels kind of like a pumpkin. So here we have our square pumpkin. So since we have this pumpkin that's done, and I told you that we're gonna turn them into jack-o'-lanterns, I'm gonna show you how to turn a pumpkin like this into a jack-o'-lantern. So I'm gonna pick a side where I'm going to uh, carve a face on this pumpkin, and I think maybe I will pick this side. And very lightly, I'm gonna add a couple triangles which are gonna be the eyes. And I'm gonna add a little triangle that's upside down that's gonna be the nose. So this is gonna be a very, a very, other than the fact that it's square, it's gonna be a very standard jack-o'-lantern. I'm gonna add a smiley face with a tooth. have a smile here and already it's really starting to look like a jack-o'-lantern but there's something we can do that's really going to add depth to this and make it pop because we have these contour lines that have kind of made it feel a little bit more 3d than maybe a flat pumpkin drawing would look and we're going to add a little bit of an edge and a lip to these shapes so I'm going to add a little line on the inside here that just kind of runs parallel 
and we're going to add another one here. And then I'm going to darken up the inside like this. If you're working in pencil, when you're done, you can go back and kind of clean up any kind of like extra guidelines that you used. Kind of polish your drawing and make it look really nice in the end if you'd like. But this is a good exercise. Even if you end up with kind of a sketchier drawing like this, it can still look really good. So I'm gonna add another edge line and a lip right here. And I'm gonna darken that in. And for our lip and our edge here, it's gonna curve. So all these lines, this is gonna curve a little bit and meet. And then with our tooth here, it's gonna have a little bit of depth to it, like that. And then we can darken this up. So there, when you're done, you should have something that kind of looks like this. So once you've drawn a pumpkin, you can kind of carve out um, these different shapes and kind of add this depth to them and you'll have a really simple jack-o'-lantern. At the beginning of this, I talked about how you can kind of take this idea and almost turn anything into a pumpkin or a jack-o'-lantern. So I am going to uh, show you a popular character that some of you might know, and we're going to turn them into a pumpkin and a jack-o'-lantern. Because you can do this once you understand how to add those contour lines to something to make something look like a pumpkin. It's very easy to take things that you already know how to draw or things that you want to learn how to draw and just turn them into pumpkins. So. I'm going to start with a circle here. I'm going to add I'm going to add this mouth. I'm going to add a nose. I'm going to add a smile. And I'm going to draw this big shape up here that's going to turn into eyes. We're going to add a couple ears, and I'm going to add a couple spikes. And this character is Sonic the Hedgehog. And we are going to turn Sonic the Hedgehog into a jack-o'-lantern. So we're going to think about the contour lines, just like we thought about them on the globe and just like we thought about them on the pumpkin. Don't be fooled, even though this looks a little bit more complicated. We're still going to have a contour line. And remember, contour lines are imaginary lines. So if you're working on this and you get done and you didn't really use this, you can clean it up and kind of make it look nice. So I'm gonna add a little dimple, the top of Sonic's head. And we're gonna add a stem. And from here, we're gonna go around and we're gonna add some of these pumpkin lines. I'm going to darken in some of these lines for his face and stuff that I want to keep. And I'm going to give him his regular nose. Sonic's got a dark nose with a highlight on it. This one's a little bit more complicated. It's okay to get frustrated. Not too many people try to turn Sonic the Hedgehog into a pumpkin. And if you don't get it right on the first time, it is okay. So my contour lines for parts like his mouth down here kind of have to bulge out a little bit more. Make him seem a little bit rounder. We're gonna give him his regular flat mouth. I think that will still make him look like Sonic the Hedgehog the most. I'm going to add some more lines here. I want the 
this to kind of bulge out. He's got his ears. And for his head spikes, I think I'm gonna have a little extra pumpkin line kind of come out like this. And then I'm going to add a shadow to the bottom of his head because this is just a jack-o'-lantern. This isn't really Sonic's head. He's not attached to anything. And so for the final part, we're going to add eyes to this Sonic the Hedgehog. So we're going to draw these round oval shapes. We'll draw one there. And we'll draw one here. And then just like on our other jack-o'-lantern, We're gonna add a little bit of a lip because these are like carved out eyes. And we can darken in the inside. And there you have Sonic the Hedgehog if he was a jack-o'-lantern. So thank you guys so much for watching this today. I hope you guys have a happy fall and a happy Halloween. Um, I hope you learned something from this. If nothing else, you've learned what contour lines are, that they follow the contours of an object. Um, remember, they're just a great tool to have in your artist tool belt. Um, they're imaginary lines that you can manipulate to do whatever you need to do, even if it's something as crazy as turn a uh, cartoon character into a pumpkin. So maybe think about a cartoon character that you like to draw or maybe a character that you've come up with yourself and try to draw them as a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween. Thank you guys, have a good one.